Now at six, one person is dead and multiple people are injured after a rollover crash in Jones County. What we know right now, just ahead. Plus people from all over the Pine Belt satisfying their crawfish cravings today at the Hattiesburg Crawfish Jam. We'll take a look in just a few minutes. We've got storms in the area and those storms will linger around for the overnight hours. Everything you need to know coming up, your news at six o'clock starts right now. This evening, WDAM 7 News is proud to be on your side with WDAM 7 News at 6. One person is dead and two people, including a child, are critically injured tonight following a crash in Jones County. Thanks for tuning in, Pine Belt. I'm Trey Howard. Eastbound lanes on Highway 84 were closed this afternoon after a two-vehicle rollover crash. Jones County officials tell us one person was declared dead on the scene and two people, including a child, were in critical condition. The identity of the victim has not been released and the condition of those passengers is not known at this time. We will keep you updated as we learn more information. Now over to our first alert weather team. Well, Nick, my perfect weekend weather has now come to an end with showers popping up across the Pine Belt. That's right, Trey. You know, uh, we've been blessed where we had several days in April that were kind of nice, but it's a different story today. So let's take a look at the forest general camera there. You can see kind of the shimmering effect, some of the raindrops falling right in front of the camera and even some of them reaching the camera as they slide down the lens there. But 70s for many of us uh, and just keep in mind that some of those roads are going to be wet. So make sure to just take a few extra minutes and give an extra distance there when you're driving behind someone. Roughly 10th of an inch there has fallen at Hattiesburg at this time. There is a very, very low risk of anything severe happening. I'm not expecting much concern here, but just keep in mind that we may see a few storms every now and again where we get some very small hail or some, you know, decent wind gusts. Other than that, we're looking good. All right, well, thanks a lot, Nick. Well, a Hattiesburg music festival that raises money for the city's historic neighborhood district is celebrating its silver anniversary. The 25th Downtown Crawfish Jam featured four different bands, several thousand pounds of crawfish, and lots of different beverages. The event is a fundraiser for the Hattiesburg Historic Neighborhood Association, and that organization maintains Walthall Park and the Walthall Community Room. It's an event that now we're seeing people that come every year from all over the southeast, you know. Yeah. Um, people who have come before, they're like, oh, we're coming back, we're coming back, and families. It's, it's a great time. You know, the whole neighborhood is here. Organizers expect to raise about $24,000 from the festival. There were long lines today at the annual downtown Laurel Crawfish Festival. Over 5,000 pounds of crawfish were cooked for this year's festival. A total of 20 vendors brought their own signature seasonings and flavors for people to taste. The festival was put on by the Laurel Main Street Association and the Laurel Saratoma Club. Proceeds went toward revitalizing downtown and other areas in Laurel. H20 Innovation took home Best Crawfish, while Down South Simmer Crew claimed People's Choice, Best Covafe, and Spirit. And today, conservation agencies across the state gathered at the Hattiesburg Zoo to celebrate an early Earth Day. Special education stations, oh, animal encounters, you. and activities for all ages showed guests the importance of conservation and how they can spark change in their community. And one huge advocate for making a difference made an appearance, Smokey the Bear. He taught guests about preventing wildfire with the Mississippi Forestry Commission and the event organizers say Earth Day at the zoo helps with efforts to further the public's appreciation, knowledge, and respect for nature. So conservation plays a vital role in the zoo's uh, mission. And so on a day where we can really focus on that mission, make that just everything that we do is super exciting to see. Monday, the Hattiesburg Zoo is partnering with the 6th Street Museum District for a community cleanup. And today marks the 14th anniversary of the Deepwater Horizon oil rig explosion in the Gulf of Mexico. It killed 11 workers and led to the largest oil spill in U.S. history. The rig was leased by BP and it was located off the coast of Louisiana in waters almost 5,000 feet deep when the explosion occurred. The rig eventually sank on April 22nd, rupturing the riser and allowing an estimated 210 million gallons of crude oil to spill into the Gulf, killing more than 80,000 birds and almost 26,000 marine animals. It was later determined that the blast was caused by the failure of a concrete core 
installed by a contractor Halliburton that was meant to seal the well. And the man who set himself on fire Friday outside of the courthouse where former President Donald Trump's trial is taking place has died. Maxwell Azarello of Florida was named yesterday as the man who set himself ablaze in Collect Pond Park. Once the fire was put out, Azarello was taken to a burn unit where he was described as alive but in critical condition. Staff at the hospital declared him deceased early this morning, but no exact time of death was given by police. Investigators are not sure what led to the man to set himself on fire, but say the pamphlets that he had appeared to be about conspiracy theories involving American government and other major figures. Police do not believe his actions are directly related to the former president's trial. Well, the U.S. House voted today in a bipartisan manner to pass a key foreign aid package. The three House aid bills add up to about $95 billion in foreign aid, including to Ukraine. The move is likely to further inflame conservatives who are against additional aid to Ukraine. Ivan Rodriguez has the details. The U.S. House passed a multi-billion dollar package Saturday that includes aid to Ukraine and Israel. With a vote of 311 to 112, aid to Ukraine passed overwhelmingly. With the vote on Ukraine security aid, we rededicate ourselves to who we are. In two years, we'll celebrate the 250th anniversary of this country, this freedom, this democracy, which would not have happened without money from the Netherlands, money from France, guns from France, a Navy from France. The $95 billion package includes aid for Ukraine, Israel, and the Indo-Pacific region. After months of resisting putting a foreign aid bill on the House floor, Speaker Mike Johnson finally moved to advance a package this week. We know the urgency in Ukraine and in Israel, and we are going to stand by Israel, our, our close ally and dear friend, and we're going to stand for freedom and make sure that Vladimir Putin doesn't march through Europe. The move could cost Johnson his role as Speaker, with some hardline conservatives against further raids to Ukraine and threatening to oust them as Speaker. I don't know how much longer our members are going to tolerate the Republican Speaker that we elected uh, to pass our agenda in the House. Uh, we, we don't know, I don't know how long people are going to tolerate this because he's doing nothing but serving the Democrats. The bills will be combined into one amendment and now go to the Senate. I'm Ivan Rodriguez reporting. Also on Capitol Hill, the Senate voted to reauthorize the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, also known as FISA, overnight. After defeating six amendments to expand privacy safeguards, senators initially missed the deadline to reauthorize the legislation, but quickly voted 60 to 34 to pass the bill, extending it for two more years. FISA supporters had warned that even a brief lapse of the law could have a detrimental impact on the intelligence gathering process. FISA Section 702 now goes to President Biden, who has championed it. Allowing FISA to expire would have been dangerous. It's an important part of our national security toolkit and helps law enforcement stop terrorist attacks, drug trafficking, and violent extremism. And Mississippi Senator Roger Wicker issued a statement today in support of the reformed FISA bill, saying in part, quote, FISA is about gathering foreign intelligence on adversaries who wish us harm. This legislation outlines reforms to the existing law to make us more certain our government is not spying on Americans. I have made the case for years that these sorts of national security programs save American lives." End quote. A teenager was denied bond after authorities say he was planning a devastating attack on his high school. We have all those details after the break. There's rain in the area right now, and there will be rain tonight. I've got everything you need to know about when the rain will go away coming up.